get started with the co-main event of the evening. This is going to take two of the best in the business, two heavy hitters who are ready to throw down. First, we're going to take time with the hard-nosed Irish Brandon Ward. Listen, you know, I'm, I'm super happy to, you know, come over to the bare knuckle side of things. Um, um, you know, ever since I, I stopped fighting MMA, you know, I wasn't totally into the MMA anymore. And, um, you know, my last last couple of years and my last couple of results, you know, kind of showed that. And uh, But, you know, this is, you know, I feel like this sport is so raw, you know what I mean? And it's so it's so well suited for a guy like me. You know, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm totally, like, I'm against the grain. Type of guy, man, you know, and I just want to, I, I, and I, I just want to brawl. I want to brawl out. You know, the bare knuckle is so well suited for me. You know, I didn't want to do all the jujitsu and you know, and all everything that went along with the MMA. So when I heard about bare knuckle coming to town, you know, and I was, you know, had the opportunity to sign on, I signed right on, man. So I'm super excited about it, and uh, you know, and I, I think I'm gonna be forced to reckon with. You know, I was just telling one of the guys before it's. You know, I've, I've never felt anything is, is so suited for me as this, you know, not wrestling, not MMA. I think this is where I'm going to, you know, where I'm going to find a nice home and, you know, do work over here. So, so thanks for having me. You know, these guys, thanks for taking the chance on me. And I, I promise I will not let you guys down. Okay. His opponent, no secret, one of the true icons of the sport, a legend in the UFC, riding a two-fight win streak in bare knuckle. It's Chris Dibberkler leaving. What's up? Um, yeah, man, you just heard my opponent say that this sport is made for him. I think this sport is made for me. Uh, I think that's going to show in the fight. Both of us are heavy hitters. Uh, my favorite thing to do is punch guys with my left hand. His favorite thing to do is punch guys with his right hand. So, uh, you know, that, that's going to that's gonna show. You know, I definitely know that... Uh, Brandon will be my toughest opponent to date in this sport, you know, I'm, and I'm not taking that lightly at all. This is the biggest fight of my life. Uh, I've got this resurgence, you know, that I'm writing right now, and it ain't going to stop. I'm pulling out all the stops. I'm doing everything I can. This comes June 22nd. I'm knocking him out, too. Yeah, these two guys say that, you know, the sport is made for them. Well, we definitely know that this sport is not made for Pauline. You know, his hands are fragile, he's got no power, he can't hide behind the gloves, it's game over for him. He's only doing this for the money, he will make a lot of money that night, and I'll make two holes in his face. Let's get it done already. Enough of the talking, you know, I heard he's known as the magic man, I just hope he doesn't disappear. Let's do it. I don't know, let's see what I gotta start with. This, this really Probably not enough time for me to get into everything here. No, um, I fucking know that. Shut up. Let's start with the first one. Let's let's start with the first one. Since well, since Artem is very talkative now, when he had the mic, he wasn't so talkative. But you've been asked this question before. Why do you eat slaps? Why? Why do you allow men to slap you? Like why the fuck did why, you? Why, why do you, you slap? Yeah, slap me now. Slap me now. Slap me now. Slap me now. Stuff. I know I've never been the, the big puncher and, and whatnot. This is, uh, but as I train, I realize my hands are uh, like freaking like, like razor blades, no, no doubt. First of all, look at this guy's face. Get a good look at, get a good look at this guy's face right now. The way it looks right now, because next next month I'm gonna make it look like a, a roadmap. Back in the day, before we had a uh, map quest and before we had ways and everything, we had roadmaps. We used to pull them out and they had a bunch of lines all over them. We'll make this guy's face look like a roadmap next month. Permanently, because his scars are gonna not go away. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, buddy. I'm good looking. I'm always good looking. Okay, you understand that. Okay, you and Connor got to be a Dante. You have your ugly fucking looks. Okay, you got your ugly. I know, buddy. I know. Keep, 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 keep talking. You had the mic a second ago. Right? Where, where was all this talk? Where was all this talk? Where was all this talk? 
let's let's move on to the next subject matter, okay? How about this? Let's move on to the next subject matter. So the next subject matter is this. I wasn't made for this, right? I wasn't made for this bare knuckle stuff. Uh, one thing about my career, I've always been known as one of the toughest guys in boxing, okay? One of the toughest guys in boxing, besides winning two world titles. This guy here was known as a punching bag with a loud mouth, which was, uh, was, go, was known as the guy who just trained with Conor McGregor. What, 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 what did this guy's accomplishments? First of all, for all the media here, it's Paulie Malinaji versus Artem Lobo, not the other way around. So I know you all you are made jerk offs in, in, in the media, like to use his name first, but he, like he's some kind of a name. Guys, outside of your circle, nobody knows who gives a fuck, or nobody gives a fuck about who this guy is, okay? Understand that, okay? He doesn't have a look, he doesn't have the speaking ability, and most importantly, he doesn't have the fighting ability, okay? Bottom line, when you become a name, your, your bread and butter has to be that you're good at what you do first. And then you brought it out, okay? This guy, this guy, buddy, shut up. Shut up already. Shut up. You had the mic, you didn't say anything. Shut up. Come on, shut up. I know. So next, so first of all, so let, let's, let's, for the next month, let's promote this the right way. Poli Malinaji versus Artem Lobov, okay? Understand that. Okay? I know you guys get mad, you know, I know, I know it's hard for you guys to understand that after two years of still not seeing a video that I smacked the shit out of your biggest name in your sport, and I'm gonna smack the shit out of this guy. When you see what I do to this guy, you're gonna be like, fuck, this guy was for real. Let me tell you something. You know how I keep exposing lies in this whole story? I'm gonna explain you the next slide, and I'm gonna give Artem Lobov a little training tip for me for the next month, okay? The main thing about boxing, you guys always say, oh, you can't cover up with the gloves. You can't uh, turtle up with the gloves. Artem even said the only reason Paulie went to all rounds, even if he was out of shape with Connor, was because he just kept covering up and turtling up with the gloves. My man, you cannot find a single highlight of me in my entire career where I defend that way. I do not defend, nor have I ever defended in that way. Boxers do sometimes defend that way. I never do. You know why? Because I don't appreciate getting hit. I, yeah, running around. I was I'm sorry to shit that I had enough legs to run around. Shut up. Shut up, you bum. I smacked the shit out of him. If you would have chased me a little bit, maybe I could have ran around. The fucking bitch ass was standing right in front of me just talking shit. And then when I smacked him around, he stopped talking and doing that too. Shut up. No. And then you, you pussy, you, you, you know, you know something. Let me tell you something else, bro. Let me tell you something else. You pussy hypocrite fuck. As soon as the sparring ended, one of the first people that came up sucking my dick was this guy right here. Look, oh, you know, that was amazing. What a, what a great job. That was him, Dana White, shut up. Fucking hypocrite pussy bum. Shut up. Bitch ass pussy bum. Let me tell you something, okay? Let me tell you something. I never lie because I don't have to fear anyone, okay? Both from John Guy. I never lie because I don't have to fear You only lie when you're afraid, okay? Now, put that together. Why is that side lying? Why is that side lying? You only lie when you're afraid. I don't have to fear anyone. I can tell you the truth and not give a fuck what you think and I've always been that way. I don't lie. I don't need to lie. Next month, I'm gonna put this guy in a fucking coma because that's what he deserves. He's a piece of shit. He's a piece of shit. Okay? You're a piece of shit, bro. You and all that whole crew where you came from, you're a piece of shit. And I'm gonna treat you like a dirtbag that you are, bro. Because after I beat the fuck out of you, I'm gonna spit on you. Okay? I'm gonna spit on you. After I finish you, I'm gonna spit on you. I might take out my dick and piss on you, bro. <laughs> So we got five, we got five weeks to live, motherfucker. Oh, get, get yourself ready. Hey. Hey. All right. I just wanted to last long enough to punish him first. If I had it my way, I'd knock his ass out in the last round. He's not gonna last a distance because he's not gonna have an answer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pummel him and pummel him pummel him. He's gonna, I tell you what's gonna happen. He's gonna come out trying, he's gonna wind up gunshot. Because every, every instant move he makes is gonna be, is gonna be matched with a fusillade of shots to the point where he's gonna hesitate to even take a step. And then at that point, I'm gonna start to assault him. So I need to get him there because I need to punish him. If, if he goes out one or two rounds, it's not worth my time. This entire thing is not worth my time unless I pummel him from pillar to post for four and a half rounds. Next media question, right there. Damian so is it fair to say that this is personal? <laughs> <laughs> to both the bitch ass that he trains with, it's only business. Next media, up, uh, right there. Bitch. You train with the biggest bitch. Shut up. It's only business. Shut up. We're not going to say it in the ring like he does. Shut up. Question directed to Paul. 
Just hold the mic. There's going to be a couple of questions coming your way. How does anybody ask you any questions? Guys, where's the MMA mask? I thought, he, I thought this guy was a name. Does anybody give a fuck what he says? That's a question. I just stand up after all the shots. Go ahead. Go ahead. Con Connor's coach uh, was on Joe Rogan's podcast uh -huh. maybe a year ago. He yeah. said that HBO filmed the entire sparring session, session. they've got footage, mm -hmm. and they're going to be releasing a documentary. We still haven't seen it. Is that ever going to happen? I don't know. You guys know. I mean, I, I, I'll tell you one thing about the sparring documentary or whatever sparring footage, whatever it is. I mean, I don't have it. I never have had it. Um, and every time this side says something, right away, you get all his fans be like, see, you're going to be exposed. And nothing ever happens. So nothing ever, ever happens. I, I'm more than welcome the footage. It's fine. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm more than welcome the footage. I edited it, though. You know what I'm saying? As a matter of fact, uh, if you see it on edited, I actually thought it was pretty entertaining. And the only reason it's entertaining is because I'm talking shit, he's talking shit. Um, it's, it's mildly competitive because I don't have enough air, oxygen to assault him. I have to attack him, put him in my spots, and then because he's such a pussy, I'll tell you one thing about Connor. He could have probably stopped me in 12 rounds because I don't have the, the air supply to go 12 rounds in those circumstances, but he's got no balls at all. So anytime I was able to land a shot or two, he gave me my brakes and he gave me a chance to re me. So all I had to do was pot shot him and, and rip him with random shots here and there. And it, it would domesticate him enough to me to keep kind of, kind of pacing myself throughout the 12 rounds. I know, buddy. I know. Go ahead. Next. Go ahead. Yeah, this uh, for David. Uh, you guys have opened up bare knuckle now. It's been growing quite a bit. Is there anything in the future that might dictate that maybe you guys are going to go into maybe left the way and bring that in? Is that something you thought about? No, I, absolutely not. I mean, we developed bare knuckle fighting championship for the style of fighting that we developed, and we're going to ride this, and we're going to keep riding it until it grows and grows and grows in the style of fighting that we developed. So we're really happy with what we what we've been able to build, and if you have been able to witness any of the fights, you know that it's action-packed, non-stop, the entire fight long. So I think it's what the fans want to see, so we're going to keep with what we're doing. So, Fernando Quiles Jr. for MMAnews.com. Question is for Arden Lobo. Uh, you know, you recently got off a war that went the distance with Jason Knight in April. Has there been anyone around you who have been concerned that maybe you're taking this fight too early? No, at all. You know, I, I always uh, make sure I take the correct medical measures. You know, I do all the CT scans uh, and whatnot. You make sure that uh, my health is uh, in order. That I'm 100 percent. And it was no different this time. You know, I made sure I checked everything out, and everything was fine. But um, I won't answer some of the fucking uh, things that this about mouth was saying. I did come up and I did shake his hand after that spar. Because to me, you know, as a fighter myself, I see somebody take a whooping like this, you know, I will still respect that. You know, I know it's not easy. Uh, I know it's not easy to get those shots. I hit those shots and keep coming. You've seen it yourself. His face was all red. Every time, you know, more pictures are released, more videos are released. He said, oh, no, 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 that's lies again. But, you know, the pictures and videos don't lie. They don't lie. There's been more than that now, buddy. There's been a lot more than that. So uh, eventually it's going to be released now. Like they said, you know, there's going to be documentary made, so the whole thing will be released, and that'll be good to see. Huh? I don't know. Don't worry. It's going to be released. Mate. We just. Hey, you never fucked anybody up. Let's talk about him fucking anybody. He couldn't fucking put away the guys that was sent there for him to beat. His first 20 fights, big fights, who the fuck are those guys? That's what they do often. They patch your record. He couldn't even put them away. How the fuck is he gonna put me away? Have you seen my fights? How the fuck are you gonna put me away with your brittle little hands? You and your fucking muffin dog. You're a fat, lazy fucker. That's all you are, coming off a couch. Yeah, because you're tiny and fat. That's what you are. You used to fight at 140. You asked for a fight to be at 155 because you're too fucking fat. You're a fat. We're going to take a few more right back there, but Apparently, I wanted to find out what was the motivation to get into bare knuckle? You obviously got an accomplished career, you're broadcasting, watching this now. Um, I'm always looking for the next challenge. Uh, I'll be honest, uh, I, I didn't plan on this kind of coming my way, you know, but they presented it to me in a, in a, in a very fashionable way, in a way that, you know, uh, you know, he sold it to me, you know what I'm saying? He's, and it, and it, it appealed to me, it started appealing to me. 
Um, as far as I see, I don't like to talk about people's money. I never do that. I never, I, I, you know, we. I think in this generation, it's been more of a, it's become a thing with social media where you talk about money and this and that. But since he keeps bringing up the, the broke stuff, um, but. I don't know. You know it's the watch, watch I'm wearing, but I smack you wearing this watch last month. Please. Just this watch alone is worth more than anything you want. Okay? My outfit today is worth more than anything you'll ever own yeah, in your life. Best. Okay? Understand that. Okay? Understand that. Okay? Understand that. Understand. The only reason I didn't drive my Ferrari in today is because I want to sit in Manhattan traffic. You understand me, right? You will never have what I have. You understand me? You're a, you, the reason, actually, uh, one of the gentlemen over here actually asked his bum why he's fighting so fast after getting so many cuts. I'll tell you why. Because this fight is only happening in early June because I don't feel like fucking up my summer training for a bum like this. I want to enjoy my summer, so I said it either happens in June or it doesn't happen. And you know what bro bum said? Okay, I gotta get the money. Now let's do it. So he's gonna put himself in a situation where he can't finish even healing up properly because he's gotta get the money from this fight. Because me, I don't need the money, but of course money's always nice. So I said, you know what, we'll do it if I get to enjoy my summer. But if I have to train into the summer, this fight doesn't happen. So don't pull out, don't get injured, because this is your shot right here. So don't get injured and don't pull out. You got five weeks. You can make your money after that. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. And again, don't talk about other people's money. You should know better than that. You're, you're, you're a European. Europeans are usually more, 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 more civil than that. Don't talk about other people's money, especially when they have more than you. Don't do that. Don't do that. I have more than him. I'm the water. Two more questions. Go ahead, right there. Um, you know, I'm, I'm only training for Harlem Globe, I don't, I don't, I don't put a specific thing out, out there in mind, but what I did was usually I hit the heavy bag for free, so I just decided to hit the heavy bag a little more, so that on fight night, I'm used to hitting a heavy bag, and I get paid for it, so it's just a, it's just a matter of uh, hitting the heavy bag a little more than I, than I usually do, and uh, this time they'll pay me for hitting the punching bag. <laughs> Hi, this is uh, for Dave Feldman, JRNCBOFightHub.com. Um, after one of the fights, I guess the first event you guys had, there was a fight that was a little lackluster that I guess was an action pack, and, and you made the comment after that fight that uh, fighters would be getting docked uh, from their purse. Do you, are you standing by that comment? Is that something that's still going to be in effect if, if these fights aren't action packed, or what, what's your take on that? Well, I think we got here to where we are today because of a statement like that, because these fighters know that they need to give. They're getting paid very well, first of all. Let me tell you, these fighters are getting paid very well. Most of them are getting paid more than they can make anywhere else in the world right now. So with that being said, you know, I demand action. I demand action not for me. I demand action for the fans because the fans are paying for this, and the fans deserve the action that they're supposed to get. So I probably shouldn't have made that statement in the ring as I made it. I probably should have handled it the way I should have handled it, which was in the dressing room. Behind, behind the scenes, but these fighters know. They, they get told when they sign the contract, they get told in the dressing room, they get told before they fight, we need action. If you don't fight, you're not getting paid. Now look, everybody got paid what they're supposed to get, and most of the fighters on the card got paid a lot more than they were supposed to get. So we treat the fighters very, very well, but we do demand action, not just action, we demand that you try, that you try to fight. Not that you try to run, that you try to hold, that you try to fight. Because again, the fans are paying for this, and I think that's what the fans deserve. I've got two more questions right there in the front. Paul, is this just a one shot fight, or are you looking to continue your career with the band and with other fighters? I don't know, I, I'll take it one fight at a time. I, um, you know, at, uh, at some point in your life, you get very busy, so I'm uh, going to do this fight, and then we'll, we'll see what, what else pops up, if, if anything pops up. We'll see, you know, I, obviously, but once I handle this guy, I'll uh, go back and so discuss with my team, uh, discuss with Dave and everything, and we'll see. We'll see if there's options for me out there or if there's not. But um, I, I can't say I'm looking at anything past this yet, you know, because you, know, you want to focus on one thing at a time. Go ahead, Paul. You can, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, Paul, just answer the question. Is there a If there's a rematch clause in place, do you take a rematch? Um, a rematch? Is this on? In the bottom. Really a question for Dave. Is there a rematch call? There'll be nothing left to rematch. Yes. He's finished after that match. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, mic down, but let's keep going without the mic. Go ahead. I don't know. I don't know that uh, a rematch will be necessary. Anybody want to really see a rematch? But you know, I mean, we'll see what happens. You know, I, like I said, I, I don't plan on anything past this fight until I get past the fight. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't think you'll look at anything. I'm a very busy person in general, even outside of my combat sports. So. So I'll see what I'm working with, what kind of time I'm working with, what kind of schedule I have, what 
present itself uh, when I discuss when I discuss with my team and whatnot, and then and then we'll see. You know, uh, rematches obviously are only merited when the fight is merited. You know what I'm saying? I do think I, I do I do think once I smack the shit out of him, I do think him and Jason Lane would be a great rematch. I really do. You know, they, you know, they, I, I, I will give him pardon credit. He does have a lot of heart. That's something he does have, but. So I, I do think that uh, him and Knight was an entertaining fight, and I think they go back and fight again regardless of, uh, of this result and what I do to him. But uh, as far as a uh, rematch with me and Arnhem, I guess you know, we'll see. Um, let, me, let, me, let me handle him the first time and then we'll talk about it. Is there anything you take from that fight? No, not really. I mean, I, I, it's not really a lot I can take out of that fight. But um, it, was a, it was entertaining. You know, I, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it wasn't entertaining. You know, it wasn't fun to watch. But I also think that. Um, he shows a lot of limitations. Um, there's, there's not a lot I can take out of it because even the looks Knight gives are, are completely different from the looks that I give and, and, and things that I'll be setting up. You know, um, his reactions will be totally different when he's fighting me because uh, the looks I give and the angles I give and the shots that fire off randomly from me are, are coming at a completely different rate and a completely different methodology than, than they do from Knight. So. I, I don't see there's a lot to see. You know, I, 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 you also see that there's going to be a lot less aggression from him once he takes a few combinations. You know, because it's, it's not obviously he's tough. He can take shots, but when you never see them coming, you're gonna you're gonna hesitate. You're gonna start hesitating. You're gonna think twice about it. All but you know, slow. I can see your shots coming from so, the way. But if, if that's what you want. Wait, whatever you see right now, he's selling the fight. He knows I'm not a little bit slow. He knows. He, just, he, he didn't even see the slap coming last month. Did you see that slap coming last month? Woo! <laughs> you didn't even you didn't even flinch. You didn't even react to it. You didn't even, and that was just a slap. Just imagine when I'm my, my, my holding my fist and smacking the shit out of you. You know, he says one thing, but then actions take speak another thing. You know what I'm saying? Even with what he said when he when he talked about after I sparred Connor, what he said to me, he couldn't believe the shots I took. It, it, that's not how we, that's not how we, that's not how we, he uh, he presented it. That's not how he presented the compliments. Huh? He said, "Well, that was amazing, great job. That was a great sparring session. That was one of the best sparring sessions I ever saw." Can you imagine? Everybody in that gym was saying that was one of the best sparring sessions they ever saw, bro. They not, that was one of the more simple sparring sessions of my life, bro. I've been in gym wars, in gyms like Wildcard, Leeson's. That was such, the fact that the MMA community thought that was a, a fun sparring session or like a, yeah, I'm sure you guys have been in the gyms for some of these warlike sparring sessions through in boxing gyms that are like, where you can charge the door. This was not one of them. But the fact that they keep talking about it and presenting it like it was shows you the limitations of these guys and the, how I know that he has no idea what's waiting for him next month. The assault that's I'm gonna that's gonna come on come his way next month. He has no idea about that. You know, he's talking, he's selling the fight, he knows he's gonna get his ass kicked next month. Trust that. He knows he's gonna get the shit beat out of him next month. He's just trying to sell it as good as he could. But he has no idea how bad it's gonna get. He has no idea because yeah, until you experience it, until you're in there and you say, fuck, this is crazy. I fought Miguel Cotto a, couple, a dozen years ago. I knew it was gonna be a tough fight, but until I was in there, I didn't realize, fuck man, this is this is next level. He's gonna feel the same thing next next month. Next month. He knows it's gonna be tough. He knows he's gonna get his ass kicked. But once he's in there and he's feeling it, he doesn't know where to hide it. He's gonna feel like he's fighting three guys, not one guy. He's not gonna understand. And he's gonna say, fuck, now I have a reputation to be tough. How do I get here and not quit? How do I not quit tonight? Because my, rep my only saving grace is my toughness, and my only reputation has been to be a tough guy, not to be a good fighter. He's gonna be asking himself, how the fuck am I not gonna quit tonight? I can't even see these shots coming out. His trainer must be coming in here beating the fuck out. He's gonna look at you, Sharif, he's gonna be like, oh, stop hitting me. You know what I mean? He's, he's not gonna know who the fuck is hitting him. Hitting him. Okay, so next month, that, that's gonna be the question. Watch his face after round one, after round two, when he goes back to his, back to his corner. Watch his face, he's gonna be defeated. But he's not going to be done yet. Like Thank you. All right, good morning. Just a quick reminder, take a second. It's June 22nd, folks, Tampa, Florida, live on paper. Tickets will go on sale tomorrow. We're going to take just a few more questions right there. Um, um, this is for David. Congratulations on the growing brand. And, um, my follow-up question for all this is that I'll... Once again, uh, this is from Fighter IQ. David, congratulations on the growing brand. There's a lot of platforms that are coming up with streaming apps like ESPN Plus and DAZN. In the near future, do you want to eventually use like a streaming platform or do you want to continue the pay-per-view model? Or is that just still a future discussion that you guys are working on? It, it's definitely a future discussion. You know, we're just going to take it one day at a time as we're doing with the sport and growing it one day at a time. And whatever's best for the company, that's the direction that we're going to head. And, you know, we'll know that as it comes, we're definitely getting some um, network offers and some different streaming offers that are on the table. but. You know, whatever works best for the company, that's what we're going to do. Great. 
got a lot of people actually asking me how to order this pay-per-view. Is it fight.tv, bareknuckle.tv? I want to put it out there so everybody hears this. It's available on Fight TV, and that's also available through a lot of different streaming platforms. But it's it's also on pay-per-view television. It's on all the major pay-per-view television, uh, all the channels that you would watch the big UFC fights or the Mayweather fight is on that same exact channel. It's on the pay-per-view television and streaming worldwide on Fight TV. Okay. This event will definitely sell out. Tickets go on sale tomorrow. Make your arrangements, make your pay-per-view plans. Do not miss what is sure to be one of the greatest fights in history. That's June 22nd, live on pay-per-view from Tampa, Florida. At Fair Knuckle Fighting Championship 6, coming our way. <coughs> Last question, we'll take one more right there. Let me tell you something. In boxing, you fight according to the respect of your opponent. You know, uh, a lot of times, I don't know. I, I'm not gonna try to. I'm not gonna tell you that I I, I like fighting in the street, but and I, honestly, I'm 38 years old. I haven't been in a street fight in a, in a while, probably since my 20s. But I don't need to box you in the street because your level is so much less than mine with my face. I I, may, I mainly just swing and shoot. You know, so I don't need to time him or or set him up or set too many traps. It's gonna be mainly go. You know what I'm saying? So. And uh, it's going to be a very bad goal for him. But but I, 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 I've been a boxer slash timing guy throughout my career, take my time, uh, do things a certain way. But I've always been a, a fast starter. I've always been a guy who uh, threw a lot of punches. And, uh, you know, I, I've set a lot of traps. But I, I, I think I think this is the, so more so the kind of fight you have to dumb things down a little bit. You know, the, the traps are simpler. Uh, you set things up and you shoot. You know, it, everything is based on shooting. While a lot of times in boxing, everything is based on putting you in certain positions, putting you, making sure, trying to make you take a step a certain way so that I can set you up for a punch later on. I don't think this guy's even smart enough to fall for those traps. So you, 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 you dumb down the traps even so that they're, that they're more like trap and shoot or just shoot or, or, or so on and so forth. I haven't devised the exact game plan yet, but we're working. And uh, we have a lot of things in mind, and uh, you'll see them next month. You'll see, but but it's 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 a it's a fast-paced game plan, and uh, and like I said, he's gonna have to deal with it.